I've been salvaging this Tesla 2170 battery cells out of the Tesla Model 3 battery module and this is the section that I cut out from the bigger battery module. Uh, don't mind the part that's burnt over there. Uh, this part of the battery is uh, shorted out and burnt but uh, the rest of the pack over here is working fine. Tesla used these little aluminum wires to spot weld all of the cells together and it's important for me to know how many amps these wires can take before they uh, blow out. So today I'm going to do a bench test to see how many amps this wire can take before they blow out. So let's get started. Let me show you how Tesla connect all of these aluminum wires together. So this is the bus wire that they weld all of the smaller aluminum fuse wire onto it. And I call it wire but it's actually solid aluminum is very thick and this part is the part that takes all of the current from the car everything you see here is made of aluminum the bus wire and the smaller fuse wire got a little magnet here you can see it does not stick to my magnet the reason why i want to know how many amps this fuse wire can take before it blows out is because I want to know the discharge rate of this battery. The current at which this wire blows out is also the upper limit of this battery. And that's because you don't want to pass the current to the battery too much and it will heat up and it will explode. And therefore this fuse is designed to blow before the battery blows. Alright, I have removed this cell from the main pack with the fuse wire still attached. Now we can do a proper experiment. All right, let me show you my setup here. It's ready to go. Got the battery taped to lead acid battery because it's heavy, so it doesn't move around. You see, I finally have a use for the lead acid battery. So here from the main battery, I'm gonna plug this in here and then the positive terminal clamp on the case of the battery. And then that will go up through the fuse wire and through the aluminum bus bar and then through my alligator clip and that will go to the two inverters so the weak point of the entire circuit is the fuse wire over here so if it has to blow this will blow first all right here we go i'm gonna plug in the light bulbs one at a time to increase the current slowly ready seven 0.9 amps, 16 amps, 21 amps, 24 amps, still working, fuse is still fine, let's turn on the second inverter, 40 amps, Wow, it's smoking over there. So I'm not sure what that is. Is that the battery? I have stopped the test and removed the battery because it was burning pretty bad. Let me show you what's burning. The plastic here underneath the bus bar is hot enough to burn and melt this plastic here. And also this insulation here between the positive and the negative terminal it also melted and you see right here it's buckled up and melted that piece of plastic right here i think the fuse is already burnt right here at the base but the plastic is melted and sticks to the fuse and keeps it in place i'm gonna have to remove this assembly out of the battery uh, too many variables Here we go, I've got it ready. Properly set up with the alligator clip. Problem is because now I have to use a part of the fuse to clamp on and therefore it has a shorter distance. A shorter fuse means less resistance and therefore it will blow faster. 
but that's the best I can do with this. All right, let's turn this on. Eight amps, second light bulb, 16 amps, still working, third light bulb, 22 amps, still working, next one, 25 amp, 26 amps, still working, 33 amps, wow, okay. Uh, I think it melted. You see there? It's melted. Glowing red hot over there. At about 33, 34 amps. Now it's smoking. Right. Well, let's see what we got here. Yep. It's got cut off right there. I'm going to try this again just to be sure. And this is what I cut out from the main Tesla Model 3 module and I'm going to find the longest fuse on this uh, bus bar and it's this one right here that is pitch long very close to the original here we go my second test just to be sure let's turn this on 21 amps 24 amps 33 amps, there we go. This is where it blows, so we just need to wait for a little bit. There we go. So now we know that it takes a minimum of 33 amps to blow the fuse wire on the Tesla Model 3 battery module. And this only means one thing, you should not push these cells above 33 amps or all hair will break loose. For my test, I have to cut the fuse a little bit shorter, so it has a lower resistance. That means it's blown a little bit earlier than the actual fuse on the battery. In other words, the actual fuse on the battery would blow at a current draw higher than 33 amps. I would say around 40 amps or so. Here comes the next question. What is the maximum discharge rate of each cell in this battery module? And I can calculate that using the specs from the Model 3 standard and Model 3 performance. So for the standard, I have the maximum current output of 571 amps. The battery pack is 96S31P, meaning it has 31 cells in parallel. So I can calculate for each cell, the maximum current output is about 18 amps. For the performance, do the same calculation. I have 25 amp maximum output per cell. Tesla is able to achieve this because it has a very efficient cooling system and this is able to cool every single cell in the whole battery pack. And because heat is the enemy of the battery, so if you can cool down the battery efficiently, you can push the battery a little bit further. But you also have to keep in mind that the maximum output is a lot higher than the continuous output. You only reach the maximum output for a short period of time and then the continuous output will be significantly reduced. The fuse is blown at about 33 amps or more. So you can see there's a lot of room between the maximum output of a Tesla motor and the point at which the fuse is blown. This makes sense because blowing a fuse means you are losing this particular cell forever. Once a fuse is blown, there's absolutely no way to get this cell back. This is the case where you have to have a choice between either to save the entire battery pack or to save this cell. So what are you going to choose, right? It's like an amputation of your limbs. It must be the absolute last resort to save your life. Let me show you an example where I got this part of the battery pack that got shorted out. This cell here, the, the top part is completely blown off. Same for the cell next to it. There's a lot of soot here because the electrolyte from this cell spill out and burn the top part of the uh, battery. But underneath is silicone and it does not burn. So uh, all of this cell below they are still intact and they are still working. 
there are three cells on this side one two three that got burned fuse but the rest of the battery pack the cells are still good and the fuses they are still good and they are still working my next step is to do an actual band test to determine the actual maximum and continuous discharge for each Tesla 2170 cell and that's going to be next until then thanks for watching